Buenas tardes. En primer lugar, bienvenidos y bienvenidas a este, a este webinar con Joseph Cornell y Javier Benayas, que hemos organizado desde la Junta de Castilla y León, el PRAE, y la editorial La Traviesa a través de, de Paqui. Eh, queremos saludar a toda la gente que nos está ahí, que estáis aquí, que sabemos que no solamente son de la península ibérica, sino también de, de Sudamérica, también hay mucha gente, así que un saludo enorme para allá. Y solo comentar que, que el centro que represento, que es de la Junta de Castilla y León, el PRAE, tiene un objetivo muy concreto que es eh, contribuir a que la ciudadanía quiera cultura sobre la sostenibilidad. Y, y hemos pensado que uno de los objetivos principales pues, tiene que pasar por otra manera de relacionarnos con la naturaleza y sobre todo de, de aprender en ella. Y, y todo el aprendizaje que, y la manera de ver el aprendizaje de Joseph Cornell es una vía fundamental para, para poder pensar en el futuro. Y así que muchísimas gracias a Joseph, a Javier Benayas y a Paqui por la, la oportunidad que nos ha dado de, de ayudarla y de, de colaborar en, en esta organización. Así que nada más, os dejo con Paqui y que disfrutéis de esta tarde. Buenas tardes, nada, gracias a, a vosotros, Tony, a, a todo el apoyo que habéis brindado desde, desde el PRAE, a todo, a todo el equipo. Yo no me voy a extender porque, bueno, hemos venido a, a escuchar a, a José y a Javier y simplemente, bueno, quería expresar mi, mi gratitud y, y, bueno, lo inmensamente feliz que me hace, pues el poder estar aquí hoy acompañada de, de estos dos grandes de, de la educación ambiental, ¿no? Como, como Javier y, y José. Javier... Supongo que la mayoría lo conocéis, es catedrático de Ecología de, de la UAN, de la Universidad Autónoma de, de Madrid, y es todo un referente en nuestro país de, de educación ambiental. Yo no me voy a parar en, en su currículum porque, bueno, es, es extensísimo. <risa> Él, de todas formas, os hablará ahora de Joseph, pero sí que quería hacer una, una pequeñísima eh, 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 recordatorio de, de, bueno, de hace algún tiempo que, que nos confesaba que, que cuando en sus inicios profesionales descubrió la, la, la obra de Joseph Cornell fue una de las razones que lo llevó a hacerse educador ambiental. ¿no? Y yo creo que, que precisamente como a muchas otras de nosotras, de, de las eh, generaciones históricas digamos ¿no? y de las nuevas generaciones de la educación ambiental, Joseph nos ha, nos ha inspirado y nos sigue inspirando y nos ilumina el, el camino para, para ayudar a, a las personas a, a reconectar con la naturaleza. Y por eso, bueno, yo siempre, siempre se lo digo, pero, pero lo quería hacer hoy también aquí públicamente, le agradezco muchísimo a, a Jose el hacer posible el, el sueño de, de arrancar el proyecto de la Traviesa Ediciones con la publicación de, de su libro, que entonces, en 2018, era, era su nuevo libro, Compartir la naturaleza, que como bueno supongo que la mayoría sabéis, es una obra recopilatoria eh, de su famosa serie de libros, Vivir la naturaleza con los niños, que incluye además otro, otras actividades nuevas y que profundiza en, en, en lo que es el aprendizaje fluido de lo que nos habla, habla hoy. ¿no? Y bueno, también le agradezco que siempre haya, haya estado receptivo para cualquier propuesta que, que le hacemos, como la de hoy. Y por supuesto también a Javier, que, que, bueno, que siempre que, que, lo, que le llamamos siempre, siempre acude, a pesar de, de las muchas ocupaciones que tiene. ¿no? Y por supuesto quería agradecer enormemente a Loren Zulop, creo que he dicho bien el, el, el apellido, que es quien nos va a hacer de traductor hoy y que va a ser posible que, que podamos comprender pues, esta conversación que vamos a, a presenciar. ¿no? Eh, veo que, bueno, que hay bastante gente, gente conocida de, bueno, de los distintos mutualismos que vamos por ahí enredando. Me alegro muchísimo de, de veros por aquí y os agradezco siempre la complicidad y especialmente a a la comunidad de la Escuela Cielo Abierto, a la REDNA, la Red Estatal de Educación Física y la Naturaleza y, y a Interpreta Natura por el apoyo en la difusión de, de este encuentro. Y nada, yo simplemente eso, volver a, a, daros, a reiteraros las gracias que decía Tony por, por acompañarnos. Y ya está, paso <risa> rapidísimamente la palabra a Javier. Eh, recordaros que tenéis abajo eh, un, una opción de interpretación porque ahora Javier y, y yo se van a hablar en inglés y entonces eh, Lorenz nos va a hacer la traducción. Entonces tenéis que elegir el canal de castellano, de español, quien quiera escucharlo en, en castellano. ¿De acuerdo? Pues nada, muchísimas gracias.
antes de empezar en inglés, yo también quería agradecer a, a Pac eh, el que eh, realmente haya, eh, después de, de que los libros de, de, Joseph, de Joseph estaban agotados y que prácticamente no se encontraban en ningún sitio, ella eh, pues ha tenido la, la valentía de reeditarlo y, y creo que todos le tenemos que estar muy agradecidos de que podamos seguir teniendo los libros de Joseph disponibles en, en español, ¿no? Eh, por eso, eh, Paqui, eh, muchísimas, muchísimas gracias, ¿no? Eh, uh, Joseph, I, I think uh, it's, it's not necessary to, to present him because uh, I think not all the people know. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's a person that is uh, an international uh, uh, teacher that uh, are many reference uh, with his uh, book uh, and his, his soul, uh, Uh, one million of copies in a, in a, in a 25 languages, different language. I, I think uh, the uh, impact that uh, Joseph uh, had, uh, um, had uh, have in, in all the world is is very very important. For this reason, I think um, it's not uh, the important is not uh, to know uh, a lot of thing about about Joseph. Uh, the more important is to hear uh, him and uh, to. Uh, learn more about his uh, experience in of uh, all these four years that is working about this uh, methodology thank you joseph for, joseph for uh, staying with us and to share in this time uh, with uh, all uh, us and uh, i hope that you uh, can uh, explain uh, of your experience and uh, your ideas about this uh, uh, this activity to to uh, learning about uh, nature Thank you very much, Javier. I'm uh, very happy to be with you today. Um, I would like to talk about um, the importance of feeling in nature education and also how full learning helps people to adopt new ideas, new behaviors, essentially how to change people from within their own experience through flow learning. Tanako Shozo, the great pioneer conservationist in Japan, one of the first, uh, he was trying to save the rivers from Japan from pollu pollution and overdevelopment. And he finally came to the conclusion after working very hard to try to change people's uh, uh, attitudes, uh, he said that the care of rivers is not a question of rivers, but of the human heart. And isn't this true? Um, it's how a person feels about something that determines their actions. Uh, you can uh, explain something till you're blue in the face <laughs> and often it won't make a, a difference. There was a, a study by social scientists and they uh, adopted certain uh, important things like climate change, uh, other social uh, problems. And uh, they, um, they were really discouraged after their study because they found that um, you couldn't reason with people, <laughs> you couldn't appeal to their emotions, <laughs> and uh, that didn't work. Storytelling didn't work. Uh, there are all these things. And they came to the conclusion that people, uh, when they had there could be a little bit of change if people didn't, uh, uh, if their beliefs weren't strong about an issue, then they were uh, open to hearing about something. But in cases where people's beliefs were very strong, uh, it seemed like nothing uh, could change uh, their perspective. And so in frustration, they said, we have to change people's self-identities. And, um, and how, How can you change people's self-identity? Well, um, there's a, um, in my new book on flow learning, um, I, um, I talk about how there's a correlation between uh, uh, people and matter in the sense of a phase change uh, to go from ice to liquid to gas. Um, you have, uh, it's all uh, a matter by increasing energy. And, uh, and that initiates a change from uh, frozen ice to 
water uh, to um, uh, uh, steam uh, mist. And, uh, and so, um, uh, and each, you know, it's the same substance. Uh, it's water, uh, H2O. It's the same substance, but when it's a different phase, uh, levels of phase change, its properties change. Uh, have you ever worked with people who were very rigid and set in their ways and uh, they had a lot of inertia and that's more the um, the uh, big stage, the, uh, the solid phase and they aren't open to new ideas, they aren't uh, 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 at all. Uh, it reminds me of uh, in Greenland. Uh, there's ice molecules that have been there in the middle of the glacier for uh, five million uh, years, and all they know is uh, the other mice, uh, uh, molecules uh, of ice around them, and their experience of life is very limited. And so um, uh, flow learning, because it introduces a level of energy uh, through people's whole engagement and uh, their, um, their great enthusiasm for the experience, for the love that they feel for nature, um, all these things, uh, it, it really helps to move people. And, uh, and it creates a stronger energy uh, in themselves and a more uplifted uh, uh, energy. And so flow learning is a great way to uh, transform people. Uh, I um, had an experience uh, when I first came to Europe in 1981. It was in a very uh, harvest area, and I visited a school. And uh, the, 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 I was talking about sharing age with children there, and all the press was invited. And I looked around the schoolyard, and it was all cement. Uh, there was one tree, scraggly tree, about 14 feet high. And this, this was going to be our key for having I mean, a profound nature experience. And uh, I was a rural boy in the mountains of California. And I hadn't seen too much of uh, big city life. And I noticed that the uh, students, many of them had leather jackets and words like kill written on their jackets. And I kind of uh, uh, gave a prayer to nature, uh, you know, for help. And, but uh, we started with uh, the sharing nature activities and they had a lot of fun and um, they were, uh, and they bonded together and uh, they were learning things and I would support things out and, um, and they started to teach uh, uh, or, or interact with much more respect for each other than the teacher had said uh, they had in a long, they hadn't had in a long time. And so there was a, a, a real um, joyful energy. And uh, I told stories to introduce an element of uh, uh, inspiration and idealism and uh, to bring nature uh, through their imagination right where we are and we use the tree for different exercises and the uh, whole transformation had uh, came to be uh, with these uh, adolescents uh, they were maybe about 13 years old and uh, it uh, you know the, they started talking about the uh, uh, the world they're going to uh, inherit and their concerns and it just touched them very deeply because it came within themselves and uh, and that led them forward and that's the secret of uh, sharing nature but also other effective programs is when uh, children uh, feel a real deep need that's being answered in themselves. They call this uh, intrinsic uh, motivation. I, I was in Hokkaido, uh, the northernmost island in Japan, and it has uh, sub-Siberia weather. It was during the winter time, and the, the whole ocean freezes around the island, so it's quite uh, um, cold there. And uh, we were... Um, we had a whole, about 120 uh, children, their parents, 
and it's like a family program. And we all went out into the snow and um, we were doing, I was doing sharing nature activities with my group and, uh, and the group started to get a little cold and they wanted to go back to the uh, heated tent, large heated tent for everyone. And there was one eight year old boy who was just so absorbed in his poem that uh, the snow started big. It was, we were in the middle of a blizzard and the flakes kept coming down and packing the ground and uh, the, soon snow came over his legs and started up the lower part of his chest in the long time he was there writing his poem. And I, I knew the other groups were waiting for us to return. And uh, uh, so I asked him if he was done with his poem. And he said, uh, no, not yet. And went back to his poem, he was completely absorbed in his experience. And, uh, and that what can happen with the sharing nature activities is that uh, uh, people are so engaged and their whole being is um, uh, uh, involved in it. Uh, they aren't resisting uh, what's being taught. They aren't thinking of other things, uh, but they're totally engaged. And this is intrinsic motivation. When um, people are um, responding to more of the inner rewards that arise within them. And they feel really touched on a personal level. And uh, extrinsic motivation is when um, the rewards are external. That means uh, the teacher will be pleased, your parents will be pleased, uh, you get a higher test uh, score, and um, you may win a prize. And, and, and intrinsic motivation has its place uh, and uh, but uh, but educators they value intrinsic motivation, but they say it's not sustainable. And uh, but through uh, experiential nature activities uh, and the flow learning process, it can be sustainable because you're nurturing people's inner needs of feeling uh, really a, a profound sense of calmness, a profound. Uh, connection with nature um and uh and, and and this is very thrilling to the soul of, of uh, the participant participants no matter if they're a young child or or adult uh, i have a friend who was um, uh, learning sharing nature and uh, in minnesota far from where i live and uh, she uh, was uh, uh, really happy with the sharing nature activities. And she was leading a walk at this facility uh, for priests that, who had um, uh, chemical and behavioral addictions. And um, most of them were academics. And so they were a little cynical about the whole setting and their program. And she started with the sharing nature activities and uh, they, uh, the priests used all their senses, they ran, they played, they discovered things, uh, they got close looks at uh, different aspects of nature. And afterwards, the whole energy of the priest was different. Uh, one said that I was like a little boy again, and I touched and I listened, and, and I felt everything around me. I remember uh, doing that as a child. And Another said, I've regained my childlike innocence. And um, they weren't uh, jaded anymore. And so um, it, it, there was a study um, of flow learning in Taiwan. And a doctoral candidate who is now a doctor in uh, outdoor education uh, said that, um, I think it was like 100% or 99% of the uh, college students that participate in the study felt they regained their sense of innocence. And uh, 97 uh, 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 the per uh, percent of the participants had uh, a felt a greater love for nature. And um, uh, I think it was also 97% felt like they got into the present moment. Uh, they added <laughs> to it, uh, some of them added to the level of ecstasy. I mean, uh, when, we're, when we're completely absorbed in nature, 
that's when we really know nature. And, um, and so the interactions that take place between a child and a flower um, or adults that has maybe lost their sense of wonder uh, because they've become preoccupied with so many other things uh, can be really introduced as long as it's on a level of uh, absorption um, in nature where they're, um, they leave their intellect behind. And, in, in, and it's not that we don't use our intellect, it's very, very important. Uh, we clarify life, we um, are able to describe things and communicate with each other and, uh, and also to learn something about a life form in such detail that we know its needs and we can work with nature. So of course, uh, the intellect is, is, is important, but there's another side um, to our um, being and that's the intuitive, the feeling side. And this is when we're just open and uh, experiencing totally nature without the filter of the human mind uh, and human thoughts. There's a um, South uh, African animal interspecies communicator and she was uh, doing an interview uh, with a lion and uh, she hooked up her brain to a bio, um, well, I forgot, the, uh, a bio uh, energetic machine. Um, I'll explain what it does. It measures the brain activity uh, and where it occurs in the brain. And uh, she, when she was doing her um, uh, interview of just uh, receiving the images that the animal uh, sends, that's how animals, they don't speak uh, Spanish or Czechoslovakian, <laughs> but they uh, can communicate, you can communicate with animals through word pictures. I once did this with a, a doe that had a young fawn and we don't have dogs in our community. It's a very peaceful community. It's a, a, a yoga community. And um, and I just sent pictures to the mother about how uh, she had such a beautiful um, uh, fawn, and uh, and she started walking towards me, and left the fawn there. It was in a lot of good cover, and uh, we just uh, communicated. Well, anyway, uh, this uh, South African uh, interspecies communicator, uh, when she was receiving. Uh, information from the lion. It's uh, and the lion was communicating with her. Uh, her uh, right side of the brain, the intuitive side, was very active. And then as she started to write up her report on her um, uh, time with the lion and her interview, uh, her analytical side, the the left, was active. And, and so, uh, of course, both are, are needed. Uh, there's a, um, this fellow that wrote about the, uh, the brain and recent discoveries of the brain, uh, he said that um, education should start uh, with um, the full experience of something uh, on an intuitive level. And then you, you bring in the intellect and then you give it back uh, to the intuitive side because that's the side of wholeness, idealism, and inspiration. And, uh, and so in, in a way, flow learning follows, uh, has also followed uh, this path uh, long before uh, the science came along. And uh, it, it starts out with um, uh, awakened enthusiasm activities, the stage one and focus attention and, uh, and then the, uh, Third stage is offering uh, direct experience. And these are, um, uh, there's uh, concepts are conveyed and concepts are experientially uh, discovered uh, uh, in a really exciting way for children mm -hmm. and adults. Uh, but, uh, uh, but then there's a, so there's time to process it and, and bring in that intellect, but it always starts uh, with the experience. Uh, one of the uh, precepts for sharing nature with children uh, that uh, I wrote about was uh, experience first, uh, talk later. 
because I wanted, first of all, for the students, uh, no matter their age, to know nature as it truly is, uh, without uh, human um, descriptions and, and that. Um, but have the experience first so that you know what you're talking about, you know, the reality of what uh, you're uh, thinking about. Uh, and, and then your, um, your thinking uh, will be clear, uh, it'll be more inspired. And so um, this is why uh, the feeling is just so important because it's really um, deep contact with nature in a way that you're totally immersed in nature. And then uh, everything comes out of that. There's enthusiasm to learn much more about uh, different aspects of nature. If you've had uh, a magical encounter with uh, some aspect of nature, maybe it's a, a bumblebee on a flower and you've seen it up close playing the camera game where you close your eyes and you uh, tap the shoulder to open the lens of the eye and look at it for three seconds from close and then you close again and that memory is retained because um, you had your eyes closed you open it for just a short period of time and so you're fully engaged and I've had people say that they remembered their photos for five years after the fact and I was sort of talking about that and one woman piped up at a workshop well I remember my photos seven years ago when we did that activity with you so um, the, uh, this is what, um, you know, we, uh, we tend to get more and more sophisticated um, uh, uh, with things and things get, uh, today, things get more and more complex. And, uh, and we have to, you know, it's part of uh, our life and uh, the evolving uh, uh, nature of our <laughs> culture and wisdom. But we have to go back to the simplicity of uh, direct contact with nature. Uh, and this is what will touch the heart and, uh, and help people to feel uh, deeply about something enough to actually uh, take action. Your behavior changes when you're sensitive. Um, and, uh, you know, I, uh, instead of uh, trying to change everybody's opinion on an issue, I found it, you know, it's my personal preference or way I work. Uh, we all work in our different ways and we all have different uh, goals a little bit and or more than a little bit in the way that we uh, hope to achieve through our classes. But I, I just found that the more, sen uh, the more sensitive, the more aware uh, and more deeply touched uh, people are, um, you can trust their actions because they'll come from a place of uh, broadened sympathy for all of life. And, uh, and that's more, I feel, all, all comprehensive uh, where you've, uh, you've totally remade the new woman or man and uh, child and, um, and you really have helped to set them on a course to uh, greater awareness and uh, so often, you know, uh, we have experience, uh, all of us outdoor educators. I know when I worked at a facility uh, years ago, um, that week in nature was life-changing. And it was like a, a, a lighthouse uh, for people because the, the new uh, perspective, the new attitudes and behaviors that they uh, uh, enacted at the outdoor facility and so um, this, uh, this world, uh, uh, our environment uh, really needs to um, have this type of learning. And, but it doesn't have to be just in an outdoor education camp. It could be going with some friends in a park and uh, even a small family and just taking time to really connect uh, with nature. Uh, I was in Brazil and uh, they talked about how uh, the foreign visitors, um, they want to uh, have as many experiences as they can. They want to do mountain biking and uh, all these kinds of things. And, uh, uh, 
and and so they're really doing it but at a certain point the the uh, the guides uh, kind of chuckle at a certain point they get tired <laughs> And then that's when we introduce a cherry nature activity and they just love it. It's a whole different perspective and it's uh, not so active and they, they really calm and they really take it in and it's made a real difference. I uh, have a, uh, one of the guides told me that uh, he had a very overactive uh, adolescent uh, group uh, who were just so excited to be out of school and, uh, they um, uh, they they were so active it's hard to really talk to them. So he took them up on a steep uphill hike up to a plateau, and they had to work and they had to cooperate a little bit uh, with each other to get everybody up there. And so they were spent by the time they got up to the plateau. And so he introduced uh, the um, uh, uh, the. Uh, I forgot the name of the activity. I'm sorry, but it's um, uh, it's where you um, place quotations uh, on the path, and they might be quotations like "If you love it enough, anything will speak to you," and many others. There's probably about fourteen or fifteen that we have, um, and then uh, and so they were walking along, and they didn't want to walk. Uh, uh, they just enjoyed where they were, the plateau, and and uh, spontaneously each one had memorized one of the quotations and then thought about it on the way back down. And the teacher was uh, uh, who who uh, didn't go, but a, a second teacher was asking them about their experience, and they all remembered one of those quotations and what it meant to them. And so uh, sometimes we have to be very artful uh, and working with people's energies uh, so that we can um, uh, have them be at their best. In play, uh, people are working at their peak level because they're so engaged, they feel joyful. And I would say yeah, deep play because deep play is uh, uh, being absorbed in nature. That's uh, the goal of deep uh, nature play. And uh, and so um, you, um, it, it's just life changing for people. And the flow learning stages of uh, awaken enthusiasm, uh, they uh, help uh, in all those stages create a, a strong flow of energy. And um, because that energy is a person's own energy released in themselves, they aren't fighting what's going on. They aren't bored by what's going on. And they're uh, totally uh, with what's going on and as much as possible. And you can uh, work with their energy if they're too excitable. You can help them to relax and be more calm and centered, more focused. And then uh, if they're kind of tired and a little droopy, uh, you can pick their energy up with a group activity where you're um, in control of the group uh, and the group is um, uh, totally uh, engaged and uh, and that. And, and, and then um, you uh, have reflection at the end and it's not enough to just have an experience but on reflecting on that experience, uh, we gain more clear uh, understanding and value of that experience and it becomes much more memorable. It doesn't just pass off into the night. Uh, and so uh, with flow learning, it's, uh, it really is magical because it gives you all the tools. And for a sensitive uh, a nature educator, teacher, uh, which, um, I feel all of you uh, are, or she wouldn't be here today. Um, we we can um, work with the child, with whoever we're working with, and um, and, and help them to be uh, more receptive and 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 help them to have very profound experiences in nature that uh, can be life changing for them. Well, I think I've. Uh, probably uh, should save some time to answer the questions, but I wanted to just, um, you know, sometimes people are, are worried about the use of feeling uh, or because they 
there's no direct outcome that they can see except for the glow in children's <laughs> eyes or adults and uh, and their uh, face becomes totally animated uh and um but it's it's it's, it's their behavior afterwards that uh has really uh changed and but there's uh in inventors and scientists uh, a lot of people that are innovators talk about this way of learning is uh, and having that experience that has led to new discoveries that uh, were totally uh, unexpected. And it's because they knew life at a deeper level uh, than uh, everyone else. And uh, they had gone to life itself. And um, and life had something to teach them and to convey to them. And life touched them. So I'm um, ready for thank questions. You. Yes, thank you, Joseph. Uh, I think uh, uh, it's a very interesting the, the experience uh, with fluid learning that you are uh, told us. Uh, I, I remember a bit uh, Fernando González Bernal that, that was the, uh, the ecology professor that, that we started my PhD. Uh, he liked to say that uh, it was more important to teach uh, people to love nature than to know it. I think it's the yes. same idea <laughs> that you explained in, in, in yes, your presentation. Yes. Well, there are uh, many questions from the, from the participant. Uh, you will need uh, hours to answer uh, all of them, <laughs> but uh, we have very short time, and uh, we need to select uh, some of the of the more relevant uh, question. Uh, one moment, I, I am looking for the for the first. Oh, the, the first. Uh, 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 ask about uh, after working for more than 40 years with this me methodology, uh, have you identified any change or difference between the first experience in the 18 and in, in those of the same years? Are difference, you identify some difference? Okay. Um, well, um, 40 years ago, or over 40 years ago, I was a younger man, and everybody who I was uh, uh, working with, they were older than I was. <laughs> and so um, uh, that was very interesting. But um, in terms of what uh, people were doing um, at that time, uh, it, it, was very, it was a scientific-based uh, uh, learning uh, of the intellect, and uh, it was conservation education. And the human element of interaction with nature was not really featured very much. Uh, and so, uh, and they were wary of um, sort of human feeling that, uh, you know, human feeling, if it's emotional, is uh, biased. And so you can't trust a uh, human feeling uh, that's that way. But when it's calm feeling, it's a whole other story because calm feeling means you're really connected with your subject and you see it more clearly. And that leads to clear thinking. So anyway, um, uh, you had to, sometimes I just wouldn't explain the philosophy. Uh, I would just uh, have people have an experience and just in sharing some things and make it captivating and uh, informational in a creative way. and. People could, um, uh, they could experience uh, ecological concepts in a joyful way, in a memorable way, and, and that helped. And uh, nowadays, um, there's much more talk about uh, maybe more, you'd say, inner learning. Mindfulness is uh, something that is um, practiced, uh, the way that the forest uh, schools are now, and and forest bathing walks, uh, it's it's really broken up uh, out of the mold and people are um, connecting on a much more subtle, uh, deeper level with nature and not just of the mind. Uh, and so uh, it's really fun to see that uh, develop it. I, I think sharing nature honestly had a big part in that. I would 
see countries change in the way that they uh, their methods um, after one visit and coming back maybe a year later. Um, but the world was ready to change and the world has changed in a beautiful way. And there's much more sensitivity, uh, much more subtle awareness. And uh, I'm really happy to see that. Um, the other the other question from uh, from Car Carmelo Marcen, uh, he uh, uh, asked about how can we reconnect with nature when we never see our eco dependency? Uh, Fred, you understand a bit the the, the relationship with uh, this uh, this idea? Okay, um, we can't uh, mentally think about our eco-dependence with nature, uh, it has to be with the heart. Uh, it has to be on a deeper level uh, because if it's only intellectual, uh, we aren't totally committed uh, to it because we don't feel it deeply enough. And so um, the first uh, priority, I've been thinking, uh, you know, the word absorption in nature. You, you could say connect with nature, but I like the word absorption in nature because that means that you're uh, totally with nature and uh, there's no part of you that's separate from nature. And, uh, and so to uh, promote this kind of experience in every, any what way you can, and if you aren't in nature, but maybe do it through storytelling about the lives of, of great people, uh, could be John Muir, um, uh, could be uh, a lot of different famous conservationists that just felt nature so deeply and to communicate that uh, in story. You know, there's uh, they've studied the brains of people listening to stories. And when the teller of the story has a certain emotion, the uh, listeners of the story, uh, their brains have the same uh, uh, reaction uh, to the teller. So they don't really have to have the, the same experience uh, as the teller, uh, they are getting the experience through the storytelling. So even if we aren't right there in nature, or if we can bring that across to people, uh, they can have their own experience. Um, just a, uh, there's a, a activity um, called uh, uh, Nature and Me, uh, where you, um, look at a place that's sort of varied uh, in nature. And then with your fingers mm -hmm. on your hand, you have them placed on your lap. And each time you see something, you note something, you take one of your fingers and tap it on your leg to sort of symbolize that uh, this aspect of nature is part of you, you're together. And then uh, you may see something else. Um, then you would put the, the second finger down on your leg, the middle finger and so on. And people have a sense of present awareness where they actually start to see things. And, uh, and they remember a forest glade uh, because they paid attention to it. Well, um, the reason why I'm telling this story is that let's say you're in an indoor lecture and you're wanting to communicate um, the sense of um, absorption in nature and touching nature deeply. Well, we have a video of an autumn forest, a beach forest, and the leaves falling. And I've been in audiences of 400 people and we've done it uh, right there in the lecture hall. And people are just putting their finger uh, on their lap as they're observing. And they have a moment of stillness, of calmness, uh, absorption with the beach forest, even though it would be uh, cumbersome to take all 400 out of the hall to do the exercise <laughs> on campus and then run back in. And so there are ways that we can do that, uh, but um, you'll get um, a lot more benefit if you uh, find a creative way to bring in that element of um, really entering into the life of nature and have a person really uh, be totally uh, in nature and have a feeling of oneness. And then, um, everything then they'll see life more as sacred because they've actually uh, felt the the sacredness of life and the uh, in interconnection and so i would recommend starting there uh we um 
we can't uh, we can't convince people uh, if they haven't had that experience. Um, uh, they will tune us out. Uh, in Germany in 1989, they had been using an approach to try to convince the students and the schools, uh, all ranges of schools, about the, the environmental problems. And um, they said their methods aren't working. In fact, they said what we're doing is actually driving students away from nature because it's become more painful and they just don't want to hear anymore. And so the, a big conference was organized in Central Europe, and um, and I was invited to. And everybody looked for a new way of, uh, uh, you know, teaching that was more positive, more life affirming, more engaging, uh, so that uh, and, uh, you could have a more uh, profound uh, experience of nature, and uh, and that would change their behavior. Uh, because it was based on something that touched them deeply, and again, an intrinsic motivation. Uh, and so, uh, I, I that's my um, take on the question that uh, will be much more effective uh, if we uh, bring in that element. And then people be with us, they'll be running along a side of us, maybe even a little ahead of us, <laughs> because we've uh, 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 you know, it inspired that movement, and not us, uh, but nature has, but we've created a way for them to be totally with nature. Thank you, uh, Joseph. Uh, uh, Dario Perez from the National Network of Physical Education in Nature uh, asked about a specific uh, target, this is the, the young uh, people. Uh, he uh, asked, how can we work with urban youth the, the disoriented, uh, unmotivated, and uh, immersed in the tsunami of digital uh, connectivity. What do you think that we, we can work with these uh, young people? Yes. Um, well, uh, I one of the things I forgot to say in the first question is that 40 years ago, life was more simple, something that we all know. And, um, <laughs> and there was less stress, uh, too. I mean, certain areas in certain countries had surely had a lot of stress, but um, the world at large, there, there wasn't. Um, so it is a challenging time. Uh, but uh, of course, that makes it all important to, um, uh, to give people uh, an experience uh, underneath all that craziness of activity and distraction. And I think uh, we have to choose our spots uh, to um, in our setting, because if we try to do it often in their own environment, uh, we don't really have much of a chance to really uh, touch them. So you should try. I think it's helpful to uh, think of, uh, you know, or create a setting uh, or the um, the conditions uh, so that you can really get them away uh, uh, from their old uh, uh, life and uh, that they're used to, uh, and uh, and 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 you know maybe it's having smaller size of, of students so that they um, uh, so you can work with them effectively, and uh, and then uh, create an experience. I had um, uh, experience with a uh, in Tennessee. Uh, um, there are a lot of black students and they they were community leaders, but they had no um, no experience of nature whatsoever. And as we started walking in the forest, uh, the girls became very they were young women, you know, maybe 18, uh, 17. Uh, and, uh, and they were hanging back and they were huddling each other because they were going into the wilderness and they thought an animal might eat them. <laughs> And uh, so we went slowly, but I noticed they were pretty subdued. And um, mm -hmm. and one a young man said how much he liked nature. He watches it on TV, and that's his been was the only experience of nature. And uh, but it was a small enough group where um, you know the fun nature of the activities, and uh, they felt a sense of joy. And then um, they had moments of. Uh, relaxation it felt good to be focused and and quiet and uh that really 
touch them. And uh, and so bit by bit, uh, they came to a place where um, they could really appreciate it and be relaxed. And, and so uh, I would recommend trying to create a situation, the conditions where people can have that experience. And often in education, we think about being more efficient. If we just lecture to a group of 200 people, uh, they'll get more information <laughs> than that. Uh, but we're talking about life-changing experience. And we're talking about the health of the earth uh, as well. And, and so in the health of the own individuals. And so uh, to pare down the experience so that is uh, workable is uh, really, really helpful. But you know, um, I found that you can work with large groups uh, larger than expected uh, when they uh, using the flow learning process and the nature activities because everybody's engaged, everybody's enjoying it, and it's not like you have a a, 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 a herd of turkeys that everybody going off in different directions, <laughs> and uh, and people are there with the the thing because they're enjoying it, and uh, and you can work with the energy to make sure the energy stays good and high. Uh, and so um, I've been uh, surprised at how um, bigger groups uh, you can really hold in the palm of your hand. And it's not you holding people in the palm of your hand, but it's the, their own experiences of nature that is touching them and is holding them uh, uh, in a group so that they can you know, experience more. Thank you. Uh, a, uh, in in uh... In all the people, there are many that are a teacher in a formal uh, school. And uh, uh, some of them, Silvia Corcero, Gisa Rebolledo, Matias Kuhn, many of, the, of them, uh, ask about what is, do you think are essential for a teacher uh, to develop fluid learning in a school? There are some uh, strategies, okay. strategy for this, uh, for this <laughs> okay. uh, area, of this, uh, and because um, a lot of people work in, in the school. Yes, yes. And, um, you know, uh, I, there's a lot of teachers that work in the school and um, use flow learning for everything they teach. And, um, but if you're... Um, so that's one category. I think that they're talking about more with teaching about nature and maybe on the schoolyards. So I'll address that. One of the core uh, principles of flow learning is, um, let's see. I wonder, oh, here it is, okay. Yeah, focus on the flow. Don't become um, distracted uh, by the details. Uh, the details are important. They add, uh, you can captivate people in your introduction of experience by uh, saying things. And um, so they help uh, uh, invite people into the experience uh, uh, and increase their enthusiasm for the experience. Uh, but uh, with flow learning, you are fluid. I like the uh, idea of flu uh, fluid as another name for fluid uh, flow learning. Um, what, what you're uh, doing is you're staying in the experience. And um, and uh, if you explain too much about things, then we become more mental. And, uh, uh, you know, you can talk more after the experience, but you're prizing more the experience and you're propping up the experience through... Um, uh, important information, uh, ideas about uh, what you're experiencing. Uh, like, for example, the build a tree game. Uh, it, uh, we, we first, uh, I developed an activity called tree imagery. Mm -hmm. And it's, you go through the year in the life of a tree and uh, you, um, you shelter all the life around you. There's a sense of stewardship that people feel uh, through the activity. And um, so uh, people just become really expansive of their role in the forest and they can see it through human perspective. But a lot of people didn't know trees. Um, 
and the uh, biology of trees. And so they were kind of confused and they said they had the identity crisis. Is my uh, a heartwood, is that outside my phloem or is it inside my phloem? <laughs> they couldn't give themselves to the experience. And so I developed the build a tree activity where you use people to be different parts of the tree. You have someone uh, be the deadwood uh, and standing in the middle. And then uh, you add um, the sapwood and then cambium and, and phloem and the bark. And, um, and, and, and you're telling, explaining each part, but the children are there. Uh, one part and they're wondering uh, what am I and uh, uh, what am, uh, and then what are my friends there uh, you know what are they going to say about them and so everybody's really engaged and they really remember uh, the concepts of a tree and how a tree functions and they're able to give uh, over to the experience and so um, I would uh, for fluid learning I would uh, make sure that um, you aren't uh, teaching too much content at the time that you're trying to have the experience. Uh, there's plenty of time to add more after the experience when the motivation is higher. And uh, and just, and, and have a, uh, teachers need to have a, a real understanding of the value of intuitive learning. Uh, that's how we really know something. Um, uh, you know, when we know it in, in, intuitionally. And then that's when we're, we're more creative. We see uh, deeper connections and uh, uh, of the subject and we see it in a fresh way. Um, there's, um, as I said earlier, a lot of innovators and uh, people that come up with fresh ideas. They first had that intuitive connection uh, with uh, whatever they're uh, working with. And they see it in a whole new way, in a deeper way, in a life-touching way. And so to have a deep appreciation for that, then you'll put that first. Uh, if not, you'll put information first. But but children won't have had the experience yet. And so uh, I would do that. There's a couple other things I wrote. Um, and then um, useful learning to create a sense of momentum. Uh, that's very important in the sense of, um, uh, you know, I was thinking about a river as it's flowing through the landscape. Um, when there's, uh, in phase change, when more energy is introduced, there's a change. Well, a river is changed by uh, energy. And how does that energy change uh, the river? Well, uh, if the uh, bedrock slopes down what that does it you know, the gravitation because liquids fluids try to uh, form the shape of their environment uh, then the river goes more quickly down or if the water is compressed in a canyon it goes moves quicker uh, so with children a way to uh, students uh, of all ages um, the way to create more energy in a group of students is to uh, have them be totally engaged with the subject uh, where they aren't fighting learning or they aren't uh, thinking of something else. Uh, but as I've said many times, I think in this lecture, this turtle, uh, total uh, cooperation uh, means that the whole energy is released. It's, uh, there's, it's not in resistance anymore, or fighting against something. And I, uh, ¿Dónde puedo coger un mat? Ahora mismo rápido, que sea así diez o... Perdonar. Eh, sorry, Joseph, I don't know what eh, one, one person eh, are introducing in our conversation. No, if, if you like, el, 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 the, we are a few, few times now, and uh, if you like, we can uh, present the last question that uh, some, uh, some people uh, are... Uh, uh, ask about uh, what is uh, the possibility to to work about the the, the uh, challenge that as the climate change, the climate change now I think is is, is the big problem that all the people are thought about. Yes. Uh -huh. do, do you have some some proposals, some some uh, uh, 
uh, ideas okay. about uh, how the, the, the teacher can work about this? Okay, I'll just finish uh, the last question just uh, uh, briefly. Um, so uh, the joy that people feel in nature, um, yeah, uh, uh, the calmness, all these things are very uh, real to them and, uh, and a value. And so that releases a lot of energy in the students. And that's uh, what's uh, exciting because the more uplifted people are, uh, the more uh, uh, altruistic they are. And okay, so with climate change, um, I haven't developed any activities um, that um, teach about climate change. Um, so I don't have a, a, a comment uh, that I can contribute uh, on that level, but I have some ideas. Um, we, uh, there's a, for example, uh, in the new flow learning book, uh, there's an activity called the Game of Molecules. And um, and it's about uh, people or the solid, uh, their liquid or fluid uh, uh, phase or um, the gaseous phase. And people, um, uh, they're first, they're solid, and then they become gaseous. And there's a whole structure to it. Well, I was thinking that with climate change, one could, you, you could see it in the, the activity in the new flow learning book. So can you see it? No, no, I. Okay. Um, you could create an experience of um, the atmosphere and the different gases and how they interact with each other and uh, the different aspects that cause more global warming. And you'd have to use uh, some creativity, um, like I've had to do with the build a tree game or tree energy or uh, the the game of molecules. Uh, but uh, as you're teaching it, and as people are moving, uh, making uh, movements as students, uh, it's playful. They become interested, and they experience it, and so it's uh, much more memorable for them. Uh, and so. Um, that's the only thing I, I can contribute myself uh, uh, towards this uh, question. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Joseph, uh, uh, for uh, sharing your time in, in, in to uh, have some, uh, some experience and the idea that uh, about the fluid uh, learning that I think all the people that are uh, connecting uh, are, uh, I am sure uh, that your work and open is, has uh, new ideas of these uh, people. And uh, uh, he can visit your uh, web page because you, uh, in, in your web page uh, have uh, a lot of uh, information about the, your books, about uh, your activities. And uh, I invite uh, to the people to to connect with uh, all uh, your uh, life. That uh, I think you are a very enthusiastic uh, person uh, about uh, to connecting with nature. And uh, I think in Spain you have a lot of people that are uh, very very uh, standing with uh, with your work. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, we continue to to working with the uh, with your your ideas. Okay. Thank you, Javier, and thank you all, uh, everyone in the audience for uh, listening today. And uh, it's my joy to share with you. Bye-bye. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>